In this presentation, we're going to continue on to part three of setting up our inventory. Last time we got the inventory items into the system, into the system. This time we're going to be setting up the beginning balances related to them. Let's zoom into it with zero. Here we are in the zero company dashboard. We're going to be going to our products and services once again. So I'm going to go to the business drop down. We're going to go to the products and services. Last time we entered the products and services. This time we're going to be looking into the beginning balances. To do that, I'm going to go to the import drop down and I want to be looking at the opening balances. So the inventory items are already set up. That'll be nice and easy for us. Now we just need to put those beginning balances in place. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go down to this template. I'm going to put the beginning balances in there as of the end of last year. So all of the transactions I have for these beginning balances, because what I want to do in essence is get the beginning balances to be equal to that 2,896 on our balance sheet. That's our beginning balances that we want to have. in. this is the ending out of the last year, beginning as of this year, 2020, when the new data is going to be put in place. That needs to be supported by the items. So I'm going to then download the template once again. So we're going to have our template that we will be downloading. And I'm going to take the information from the data that we got from our last accounting system and put it into this data. So here's our last accounting system. We couldn't add the two line items when we added the items, that being the quantity on hand and the unit cost in essence. So that's what we're going to add now, the quantity on hand and the unit cost. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to make these a bit larger. I've already entered the data. So this is going to be the data that will be included. I'm going to make it a bit larger. And so we can see this. So here's the ELP uh, and the Epiphone. And it's going to the inventory account of the 1400. The quantity on hand, this is going to be the new information that we need to input. We're going to be inputting one for the ELP, two for the ER, uh, I mean, sorry, one for the ER, for the ESH2, for the ESP1, for the GUSA2, and for the SSB1. And then we're going to have the totals over here. Now, be, be careful with these totals because these totals are um, including total quantity on hand. In other words, you might think that you would have the, the quantity times this number would be how much they would put into the system. But no what you want it to is, is for example th this one we only have one on hand so it's 400 400 per unit there's only one unit this is 440 and we're, when we're picking up the cost note to not the retail price this is the cost just the same cost that we put in the prior data input screen for the cost when we buy a new unit and this is going to be the 440 then this one actually has a cost or a unit price of the 640 divided by 2 or the 320 we're going to put it on the books at that 320 times 2, which is the 640, the zero system will then take that number divided by 2 and put the unit cost on, on, on you know, it'll have the unit cost, which will be that number divided by 2. And then we've got the, the 480, there's only one of those, and the same thing here, there's two of them, total cost for the two of them is 608. When we put it on the books, it's going to take that, cut it in half for the two individual units, and then one unit here at the 328. So these are just the costs, but we need to pick up the total cost, not the unit cost. Now this, be careful for this last one. We're not going to be putting this last one to the account of 1400. There's going to be a journal entry that happens here. One is the inventory is going to go up by the 1400. Where's the other side going to go? That's what we're going to list this account as of. So in other words, if this account goes up, then some other account has to be affected. We're going to wash it all out in equity. So we would like the other side to be hitting equity in some, in some way, shape, form. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. Let's say we need to pick up an equity account and see if we can uh, do that directly. So I'm going to create another tab. I'm going to go up to our uh, chart of accounts and see if we can pick an equity account that we want to be uh, going to. So I'm going to go up top. I'm going to go to the accounting. I'm going to go down to the chart of accounts. I'm going to be looking for an equity account. So let's go on over to the equity. So let's go to the equity tab. It'll narrow it down for us. And so then we have uh, the owner's capital, the owner's investment, the owner's draw, and the billable time, and uh, the retained earnings. Now it says don't use the retained earnings. Why? Because I th believe that's the one that the, the system usually picks to be rolling over the net income to retained earnings. But that's really kind of where it should go. 
So let's see if it lets us post to that one because that's kind of where it should be. If it doesn't, then I'm going to put it into like the capital account or I'll select another equity account. So let's try the 3900 and see if it gives us uh, an error on it. So I'm going to put this one at 3900. I'm going to copy that down. So I'm going to copy that and paste that down and see if it says no, we're not going to do that. We told you not to post to that one, but so we'll try it. So I'm going to save this and then we're going to put this on our old desktop. Notice it is a CSV file, of course. So I'm going to go to the file tab. I'm going to go to save as. We're going to look to where do we want to put this on the old desktop. We're going to be browsing and I'm going to put mine into uh, this uh, file. I want to be replacing this one that I did before that I, I messed up. I wasn't happy with it, the results. So I'm going to replace that one. It's going to be a CSV file, remember? So this is an Excel file, but it's saved as a CSV file. I'm going to close this up. We're then going to go back to the first tab in zero and then update any zeros. We did that. Okay, now we're going to upload it. So it needs to be a CSV or a TXT file, text or CSV file. Ours is a CSV file, so we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and see where it is. Let's browse. Let's find it. We're picking up the opening balance value one. That's the one. That's the one. And we'll open that one up. There it is. CSV file dot CSV. That's good. We're going to hit continue. See what happens. All right. This looks good. It says it's got six items here. The items total up to 2,896. Does that tie out to what we should see uh, on our balance sheet? We got 2,896. That would make sense. And then the inventory balance then was zero before and retained earnings was zero before. It's going to be converted to 2,896 after and the credit balance in retained earnings after of the 2,896. That looks like what we want. Let's go ahead and complete that. Let, let's see if it uh, finishes this, this thing up or if it gives us some kind of uh, problem. No problem. I knew it wasn't a problem. I knew there wasn't going to be a ride. Complete confidence. So there it is. It's all in the system. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some reports and see what happens with it. So now we're going to we're going to open up our balance sheet first. I'm going to go to the other tab over here. I'm going to go to the accounting drop down. I'm going to go down to the balance sheet where we would expect to see that inventory uh, item in there. And um, so we are in the balance sheet as of December 31st, 2019. There is our balance sheet uh, item in the assets. The other side going to retained earnings. We also should have a supplemental inventory report, kind of a sub ledger. Let's right click on this and duplicate this tab and see if we can go ahead and find that sub ledger for the inventory. So I'm going to go back up top. I'm going to go to the accounting drop down. Let's go ahead and look at our reports this time. We're looking for an inventory report, breaking this thing out by item. So I'm going to go down to the inventory down here. We want the inventory item summary report. I'm going to be picking up that inventory item. So I might even put that in my favorite reports because that's a good one. I almost want that in my drop down. But I won't do it this time, but maybe later. And this is as of January 1st. And we've got our inventory item by item summary report. So we got our total basically opening balances here. Those add up by inventory item, listing out the inventory items, adding up to that 2,896. If I go back to then the balance sheet, that of course tying out to the 2,896 on the balance sheet. Back to the inventory balance summary report. If I went into one of these items, for example, I can then see the detail on it for this. This one, for example, has the two items in it at the 320 for a total of that 640. If I go back to the report and there it is on the report. I'm not there yet, but it's going to be there because we saw it like before when I, before I clicked on it. There it is. And now let's go back to the balance sheet. Now notice again, we put everything in there as of December 31st, 2019. That's kind of a double check because I did assign the other side to go to equity. And so it's not going to mess up the income statement. There's nothing on the income statement that's going to be messed up because the other side didn't go to any income statement account. And that's good. So it's kind of a double check. I'm going to put all the beginning balances, if I can, into December 31st, 2019. And if I can, make it go to the equity account, like retained earnings. But if I, if I have to put something to the income statement, then that's fine. It'll wash out then to retained earnings by the time that we want to start the organization and start entering the data into this current file, which will be 2020. So in other words, we're going to start entering data as of January 1st, 2020. If I have to do anything funny to temporary accounts like income statement accounts prior to that or any other kind of equity account that I need to make adjustments to, I just I would like all that stuff to happen in 2019 
so that those temporary accounts or whatever happens on the income statement will wash out into the retained earnings through the closing process and we'll all be good to go as of the starting point, which is January 1st, 2020.